everybody, I'm Tabitha and I've read five more books. So the way things are going to work around here in 2021 is I set an official TBR at the start of each month and make sure that I get that stuff happening first and then we're spinning for bonus books. So the five reviews you're about to see are the five that I had to get done. So let's just get to them so that we can get to those bonus books. Are you ready? Let's go. First up in January was Dear Nobody, The True Diary of Mary Rose by Jillian McCain and Legs McNeil. This is a young adult each category contemporary like nonfiction story. It was published in 2014 by Sourcebooks Fire. It is 330 pages and this one got the only shield for January because it was the oldest book on my TBR before the year started. Dear Nobody is the true diary of Mary Rose, a teen with a rebellious streak and cystic fibrosis. It's a diary of a girl who wants to be seen and heard. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like about this one is it is a little jumpy and disconnected. This reads like a diary. It reads like a diary where pages are left out or skipped or where the writer, you know, forgot about the diary for a while and then picked it up and wrote something new. But it basically means you don't always know all the characters. You don't always know what's going on. There's some information missing. There's timelines missing. You're definitely not always getting the full truth. While that's expected, because it's a diary, I think it's definitely a strange feeling for the reader since you're picking it up like a book. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that this girl makes so many bad choices, it's actually really hard to read. Maybe that's the parent in me. I don't know. I just really wish I could stop her before something even more serious happened. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is I mean, you really are reading someone's diary. There's definitely a part of me that felt like I was doing something wrong, reading the private thoughts in the diary of someone. I mean, it's raw and it's uncut, and that makes it feel just like you're intruding in her thoughts, which is unfortunate. So what did I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I did like, and it kind of piggybacks on what I was just talking about, is it is raw and real and emotional. There's no doubt that you're reading someone's private thoughts, yes, but at the same time, you're reading something um, like she didn't hold anything back. It's real. And that's, I think, what they were going for, having you read something that was just so real. Second thing I could say I liked about this one is it does give you insight into the mind of someone battling a disease. Mary Rose was honest and she was open while she was writing this diary. And it just kind of shows in the things that she's willing to talk about and let you in on. Um, and I think, again, that was the point. Third thing I can say I liked about this one, and this is what everybody says they like, is that Mary Rose was given a voice here. She talks more than once in the story about how she wants to be heard or she just wants to be someone, and this diary gives her that chance. That's what there is to love about this book. So who do I think should read this one? I think if you're a fan of somebody who would like enjoy a reality TV show about like a documentary that followed a teen battling with cystic fibrosis or with a serious addiction problem, you might love this book because that's exactly what this is, like following her life and all of that. I just think if you liked the book Go Ask Alice, you're going to like this one even more because where that one was anonymous and it was surrounded in controversy, this one is real. And the other thing I can say is that this is a diary. If you keep that in mind going in, I think you're going to be perfectly fine. My rating? I gave this one three stars. This one was hard to rate because it's categorized as young adult contemporary, but really at the end of the day, it's nonfiction. So I think the authors knew this was going to be a niche book when they wrote it. When well, I'm sorry, when they were compiling it is better. When they were compiling it, they knew it was going to be niche. It's not for everyone, but if you're the fan of, of a, like a diary style story, I think this is definitely going to be your favorite. So three stars for Dear Nobody, The True Diary of Mary Rose by Jillian McCain and Legs McNeil. Next up for January was Scream Catcher Dream Chasers by Christy J. Breedlove. This is a 2020 publication by Melange Books. Um, they're an independent press, and I did review this one at their request, and it is a young adult age category fantasy novel at 240 pages. Jory Pike and her friends survived a dream catcher world once. Now, they're determined to enter the world of dreams to help other seekers survive. Do they have what it takes to escape twice? So what didn't I like about this one? The first thing I can say I didn't like about this sequel is that these kids are calling themselves experts. Can you really be committed to being an expert if you've only done something once? The idea of not only agreeing to do this again, 
But also telling a client that they're experts and entering into this seemed a little intense, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Like it seemed like the characters were overreaching. Um, but at the same time, I also think that was intentional. Second thing I could say I didn't like about this one is it does suffer from some telling instead of showing. A lot of this book felt like I was watching action from the outside. I never really felt like I was in the action. Um, and I never really felt like I was scared of any of it myself. Third thing I can say I didn't particularly like about this one is that the science and the logistics, I don't feel like they have to apply to a dream world. Um, too much of what was happening inside of this dream catcher world kept being dismissed or explained away using real science. I don't know about you, but my dreams are often chaos where anything goes. I don't know that your dreams would follow logistical reality or follow science. So it bothered me that they kept trying to fall back on real science. So what did I like about this one? The first thing I can say I liked, and I think I said this about the first book in this series, is that the monsters are great. They are scary, believable, and ripped right out of nightmares, which of course is the point. I had no trouble picturing them or understanding why our characters would be scared to death when facing a monster such as this. Second thing I could say I like about this one is I do like the characters. I like the main crew. They're determined, they're smart, they're strong. You get a real sense of their strengths and their weaknesses. I like flawed characters. And I think part of that overreaching and calling themselves experts is a character flaw, but I think the author makes it work. Third thing I can say I liked about this one is I still love the concept. The entire idea of a dream catcher malfunctioning and pulling you into the nightmares where you have to like battle your way out is just fascinating. Loved the concept the first time around. I love that it still works in this one. I don't feel like it's going to get old. This author could keep writing these and it would keep working. Who do I think should read this one? Obviously, if you're a fan of the first book in this series, which I think was called Scream Catchers, that is a great place to start um, and keep going. Now, great book, great series, great sequel. I also think anyone who likes the idea or the concept like I did of a dream catcher, a real dream catcher, pulling you into nightmares should definitely check out the book. It's a unique concept and it's well done. My rating? I gave this one three stars. Not everyone is going to like the way the action is written to be more tell than show, but I do think the concept will appeal to a lot of readers and gain this series a lot of big fans. So I went three stars for Scream Catcher Dream Chaser by Christy J. Friedlove. Next up for the month of January was The Great Gatsby graphic novel adaptation by Kay Woodman Maynard. This book is coming to you at the end of the month in 2021 by Candlewick Press, who did send me this advanced reader copy in exchange for an honest review. This is a young adult age category graphic novel and of course is a retelling of a classic and it is 240 pages. An illustrated adaptation of the classic by F. Scott Fitzgerald, this graphic novel will bring to life the themes and the metaphors of the original in a refreshing way. So what didn't I like about this one? The first thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that some of the text is a bit hard to read because of the way it's backed into the drawing. It makes for an absolutely beautiful image, but just be warned, you may have to keep your eyes peeled for hidden words. Second thing I can say I didn't particularly like about this one is, look, if you've never read The Great Gatsby, you might be a little confused in some of the jumps. There are parts of the original book that for whatever reason are not included in the graphic novel. It can be confusing. Some of them are condensed, changed, or shortened, or cut altogether. Um, so just keep in mind that this was written more to be a companion than a replacement. Third thing I could say I didn't like about this one is if you completely loved the original, you would probably say that this adaptation is childish. I think it may help to remember that the author's idea here was to bring the original to life with fresh drawings. It's not meant to replace it. In fact, the author herself recommends everyone read the original. She just says she was trying to give it um, like a fresh new take in case maybe it wasn't your favorite the first time. So if you completely loved it, you may not like this retelling. 
So what did I like about this one? Well, the first thing, and this is a big one, is the illustrations are wonderful. Of course, they have some text hidden in them, which I actually think is cool, but they make the metaphors come to life in really interesting and cool ways. Some of the metaphors, the author chose to give literal interpretations instead of the metaphorical ones, and I just think it was it's really, really cool. It could foster incredible conversations, and the illustrations are remarkably well done. Second thing I can say I liked about this one is I really like the concept. I should come right out and tell you I am not a fan of The Great Gatsby. So I had my reservations because it's not my favorite. But honestly, I feel like this story brings it to life in a perfect way. Um, I wouldn't recommend reading it by itself without ever reading the original. But if you're reading the classic and you're finding yourself thinking that it's... Um, a little too wordy or out of touch or maybe you're just frustrated with some of the characters maybe check out this companion to go with it side by side i just feel like it gave me a new appreciation for some of the story than even the classic could do who do i think should read this one the first people i'm going to recommend this for is reluctant readers of gatsby or maybe people who didn't love the book the first time around this may give you new appreciation for the classic like it did me Second group of readers I'm going to say might want to try this are young readers trying to wade through Gatsby for the first time, maybe for school assignment or whatever. I would suggest reading these side by side. The format of the graphic novel uses a lot of the same language, but the illustrations are going to help you understand it a little better and maybe make you feel more connected to the characters. My rating... I gave this one four stars. I think this graphic novel set out to bring the story to life in a way that would appeal to a new group of readers. And I think it does that. I honestly think graphic novel readers are going to adore this adaptation and I highly recommend it. So four stars for the Great Gatsby graphic novel adaptation by Kay Woodward Maynard. Next up for January was An Audience of Corpses by John Maygrove. This was independently published in 2020, and I did get a copy from the author in exchange for an honest review. It's an adult age category mystery thriller, and it is 219 pages. Jack Hornby, apprentice to a private investigator, has just buried his mentor when a return client requests his help. But this simple case of infidelity is about to take a strange turn and leave Jack chasing demons all over London. So what didn't I like about this one? The first thing I can say I didn't like is this one does have grammatical mistakes, including a few spots where the tense changes from present to past or back and forth. This made me have to slow down and reread a few times, which of course takes you out of the book. A few times it even made me have to stop and completely figure out what the author meant by a sentence. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is it does have detail overload in the beginning of the book. I noticed this seemed to calm down as the book went on and the action sort of picked up, but in the beginning, the sentences were really long and flowy and generally contained way too much detail. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is we do have one big overreacting cop that seems to overstep the boundaries and get away with a lot. This made me question the point of including a character like this. Normally, when we have a character like this who overreaches, it's for the plot. It's going to drive some big lessons or move plot points along, and I didn't see that from this book, making me wonder why we chose to go that way with this character. So what did I like about this book? The first thing I can say I did like is figurative language. This book makes great use of simile and metaphors to explain things. I like that a lot of them were fresh and non-cliche, and I liked seeing them in a mystery book. I thought that was pretty awesome. Second thing I could say I liked about this one is the ending. I like when authors take a risk, and this ending did that. Well, I can't tell you the risk, because I have a spoiler-free philosophy around here, I can say that it was unexpected, and I liked it. Third thing I can say I liked about this book is Stephanie. Much of this book contains that old school private detective sort of feel, but Stephanie is different. She's more involved than your typical secretary role, which is the role she was supposed to be filling in this book. I liked her gumption, I liked her attitude, and I liked her go get because not every secretary in an old school kind of private detective novel would have that same kind of go-getter attitude. She was pretty cool. Who do I think should read this one? If you are a fan of old school private detective novels, I think you're going to love this one. Keeps that same vibe and feel all the way through. I also think if you want a mystery thriller that takes a few risks and utilizes good figurative language, you should be giving this one a shot.
my rating. I gave this one three stars. I like the mystery. I think the mystery thriller, thriller fans are going to feel the same way, but just be ready if you're overly sensitive to grammatical errors. I think you need to be really careful of this one, but I do think mystery thriller fans will love it. So three stars to An Audience of Corpses by John Magro. The fifth book for January, making it the last for this video was the Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This is an adult age category historical fiction novel. It's coming in February of 2020 by St. Martin's Press. And I did get an advanced reader copy from the publisher in exchange for an honest review. This book is 464 pages. Set in Texas in 1934, this novel follows a farm family living through the Great Depression in the Dust Bowl era. Elsa Martinelli must make a choice thousands were faced with to fight for the land she loves, or to head west in hopes of a better life. So what didn't I like about this one? There are some unnecessary scenes in this one that sort of slow the story down, particularly in the beginning. I do think they were on purpose to set up the Great Depression, slow moving start to the story, but just be aware that you're gonna feel that as a drag as a reader at the beginning of the story. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one, I am working from an ARC. I was working from a paperback advanced reader copy. So I feel like I should mention I saw quite a few grammatical errors, but those will likely be caught before publication and fixed. And because I'm reading an advanced reader copy, they of course have no effect on my rating. I just have to mention them. Third thing I can say I didn't particularly like about this one is it is very hard to read. Of course, that is the point. But you are faced with character death, starvation, animal death, violence, and more. Just be warned, this one is going to be tough to get through. So what did I like about this one? The first thing, and this is always true for Kristen Hanna, I feel like it was very well researched. Of course, there is no real Elsa Martinelli, but I have no doubts that there were women like her that lived through time periods just like this. The book reads real, it reads raw, it feels possible and terrifying. It feels important to bring these stories to life. Second thing I could say I liked about this one is it does have big lessons. Again, that's pretty typical of Kristen Hanna. This one is packed with lessons you can draw from the characters' lives. Some of them are laid right out for you, like a lesson about speaking up, but some of them are buried deeper, like ones about finding your true self. There are lots of great lessons here, and I think you are going to love them if you like stories with big morals. Third thing I can say I like about this one is the characters. Kristen Hanna has a way of creating characters that are gonna feel so real to you, you're going to hurt when they hurt. In this book, that's particularly painful since this is really a book dragging a character through the worst years of her life, but it is a masterful creation of emotion and character even when it hurts the reader. Who do I think should read this one? If you are someone who's interested in stories about the Great Depression, this book is well researched and I think it'll really give you some of the material you're looking for. I also think if you're a fan of Kristen Hanna or any of her previous historical fiction works, you will not be disappointed. Her characters to love and her big lessons come back in this one, making it another great book. My rating? I gave this one four stars. Strong characters and solid research make this a historical fiction novel that fans of the genre are going to love. So four stars for Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. All right, my friends, that is it for me and the first five books that I read in January. I do want to tell you that I have been spinning the bonus books wheel over on Instagram. So if you don't follow me there, you probably should. The handle is author Tabitha Shipley. Um, I'm spinning the wheel. I'm letting you choose sections that are blank. Um, yeah, really, we're just finding out what I'm reading next. And you know, it's been a lot of fun. So if you need another read, definitely pop over, follow me there. Because when I spin the wheel, pretend I'm spinning it for both of us. And you can pick the same way I do. Hey, my friends, thank you for being here. Drop a comment to let me know you're still here. Hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your own dreams. And I will see you next time. Bye. <music>